I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, the first um, item on the agenda is a review and approval of the consent items, and which include May 14th, 2018 meeting minutes, accounts payable manifest for June 19th for 85,135.53, and one for June 26th of 22,181.99. We have a payroll manifest June 21st of 54,519.33, and six. 2818 of 55,267.21. We have a yield tax levy of $270. We have reconciliations from both the tax collector and the treasurer for the month of May. And we have a school department ACH payment authorization. Are there any items that members would like removed for the consent calendar? Hearing none, I want to take a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, Motion by Mr. Bork, seconded by Mr. Brunel. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Are there any other items that members would like placed on the agenda for this evening? Okay, hearing none. Public input will occur no earlier than 6.15 p.m. And we'll um, go on to the regular business. The First item is the fire chief's employment agreement, Mr. Brown. Okay, um, so the, as the board's aware, there's been uh, discussions ongoing with our fire chief and resolution, uh, we came to resolution about three weeks ago, we just, because we had to cancel one meeting, it's being ratified tonight. Um, as you see in your packet, um, Chief Ratzel has signed the agreement and just waiting for your vote to approve it and signature. Gentlemen, I'll accept a motion to approve the contract. So moved. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Aye. <clears throat> one abstention. Motion carries four, zero, one. Okay, okay. item, uh, which uh, appointments? Now we're on to appointments. We have the following. I will read them all and then we'll do one at a time. We have Francis X. Fratzel III for the fire chief, uh, term to expire March 31st, 2021. We have Teresa Houston to Mosquito District Commission, term expiring March 31st, 2021. We have Henry Mansigian on the Heritage Commission, term to expire March 31st, 2021. We have Dr. Kimberly Queenan on the Heritage Commission, term to expire March 31st, 2021. We have Stephen Callawa to the Heritage Commission, term expiring March 31st, 2021. And we have Christopher Underwood, full-time police officer, effective July 10th, 2018. Um, do any of the members wish to speak with any of the appointees as they are present tonight? Most of them are, I believe. I've asked them all to be here. I don't know, Teresa? Is she here? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> do any of you have any questions or comments for us? Oh, sure. Come on up to the doctor. Uh, Kimberly Queenan, uh, trying to go for an appointment for the Heritage Commission. I just want to make it clear that I'm also a member of the Historical Society, and I want to see if you think that's a conflict of interest or not. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's complements it. Mm. Okay. I don't, uh, sure I don't have an issue. Though. Yeah. Just Doctor, for I think that uh, with all your expertise and skills, <clears throat> I think be complementary to each other, and we thank you for will willingness to do. Thanks. Uh, would you like to vote the, um, them one by one, or should we vote them all in a group? You can do a blanket vote. Okay. Like Motion to accept all of the appointments tonight. So moved. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Second. Seconded by um, Mr. Weber. Discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, five zero zero. I want to thank all of you for wanting to serve the town and you know, <clears throat> appreciate all of your efforts. And um, if you have any questions or anything, please come to see us and keep us informed. So, and you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to uh, depart. Um, okay, that will, oh, the appointments. Now these have to be, they're gonna have to get them notarized. Yeah, they, all, they all sign, you can you give them okay. out right now. And <clears throat> Teresa Houston, is she, is she not here? No. Henry, see. Yeah. yours is uh, complete if you wanted to get sworn in by the town clerk. Oh, she's closed. Okay. Do you want them to? So we can leave. Form? I can leave all the forms with the town clerk's office, and then when you can come in during business hours, and they will swear you into office. That works great. Okay. Okay. Want to do that for all? Yeah, I'll do that for all. Okay. Great. Thank you again. Okay. Next item: Margaret Almeida, Christmas in Litchfield event. Margaret, welcome. Thank you. Hi. So quick introduction. Margaret has been exchanging emails with me um, for a couple months now, um, reaching out to all the uh, public safety departments, uh, key stakeholders in the town. Um, she's taking on the effort to um, organize the first annual uh, Christmas tree lighting event. And so I thought it would be a good idea for her to come in, talk to the board of selectmen, just make you all aware um, so that as the event gets closer, uh, no one's got any surprises. We, if anyone has any concerns, we flush them out now. Um, no, that's great. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, so it's not, of course, just me. There's a number of small yet enthusiastic group of um, volunteers, residents of Litchfield. And so um, we hope that um, on, uh, not just hope, we know, Saturday, December 1st, 2018, will be the first annual Litchfield, uh, Christmas in Litchfield tree lighting celebration. So we have at this time presented um, to the rec committee that was, that we did that um, back on one of our first things that we decided to do was try to just work with them, try to figure out where we they thought would be best to hold a, a really large sort of town event. We hope it's a good turnout. Um, so we sort of landed on the Dara Pond um, Talent Hall. And so we are a subcommittee of the rec committee um, and um, are working with them. We have Peter Ames as our formal rec committee liaison. Um, we envision we have been working with uh, um, a variety of community members so the lions club they have a great santa we've secured you know a santa for the event and we're working with the school um, we work with carolyn late who is one of the music teachers and she has us on the school district agenda to have a group and we sort of are leaving it to her discretion as the you know lead um, to figure out, you know, how she wants to use, we're asking for some caroling and, you know, some involvement with the kids to come and be part of that. Um, we are also, um, have reached out to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, so other <coughs> um, uh, organizations in hopes that they'll be, you know, creative, and I know that they will be able to come up with some really cool ideas to help you know, have the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts kind of leading maybe some crafts or, you know, some activities, whatever they decide to do, but, try, you know, sort of maybe mentoring the little smaller kids, something like that. Um, we are using, um, we would like, and we have worked again with the rec committee, uh, we envision a fire pit. We're working with um, Light Up the Night, which was the organization that did the Budweiser plant for their Christmas lighting. Um, that the owner is a Litchfield resident and Josh, I don't know if anybody knows or of him, but he is spearheading our kind of lighting. He has, he's donating um, the lights, he's donating, he's already ordered our tree. It'll be a 30 foot tree. And the joke is we'll be able to see it from space, but <laughs> it will be in the center of the um, 
field. And we hope that it, you know, because it's so far away, we didn't even want to use sort of a smaller tree. We wanted something you could see from the road at a distance. Um, but you're, we did, we notified um, the chief of police. Uh, we notified the um, fire department chief. Um, and we wanted to make sure that they were involved. And just, you know, if there's anything that we wanted to start kind of having discussions around, you know, like parking and making sure that we're following the rules and kind of flow. Those are things that, you know, I'm not an expert at, the volunteers are not experts at, but making sure that the small children are not, you know, nothing happens with all the cars going in and out. And so we wanted to make sure that we get their support and some help around figuring out the best, safest way to pull it off. Now, have you, um, did you know that the women's club, I didn't know if you had contacted them, the Litchfield Women's Club also, they, you know, the Santa comes in a fire truck to their yes. event. And I didn't know if that's something you wanted to maybe coordinate with them. So we're doing that weekend. So okay. Friday night, the school board is planning, and I've been in contact um, with Tina Bro. So she's on the school board in Harrison, and she has been, she, they're doing their Friday night. Um, it's kind of a craft fair kickoff. Saturday morning, mm -hmm. that's when the Women's Club are doing the Santa Pancake Breakfast, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this will be Saturday evening. Oh, great. So great. we're hoping that it's um, really kind of a coordinated effort. We've reached out to the library to find out when they're doing their Polar Express so that when we have our kickoff weekend, we kind of can have a Litchfield, Christmas in Litchfield, kind of like, you know, civic sure. um, organized event. So um, it's our first year. You know, we're learning as we kind of go along. We're hoping that, you know, as years to come, potentially we do have maybe a, our own Christmas um, parade. We've been asked if there's going to be a parade. We have not made a decision to have a parade at this point. Um, but we will be inviting um, vendors. Um, we are currently putting one of our volunteers put together, at one of the planning um, members put together um, a business list. And right now she has 59 businesses. We did reach out to the town to figure out who they have on file. <clears throat> we also did an internet search, but we are sending around um, like a little letter and I can just pass it around and show you what, this is just a draft, but trying to solicit so that we have some support and potential income for following years. Um, we, I emailed with Peter Ames, our rec committee liaison um, contact, and he had <laughs> said, you know, at this year we'll use our tax ID. We're going to be asking for donations. We'll be asking for donations for some cocoa. And things will get very detailed moving forward because now we've, like I said, secured a location. We've got pretty, pretty much, we're, you know, our lights figured out and um, contacted local. I think we're in a really good spot, but this month we will be drafting the letter and using our contact information. We'll be asking people to just verify if that's their contact information. And we will be working with Peter Ames and the rest committee around sort of having a spot for our, our donations. So um, that's our update for now. I think, um, you know, we're, like I said, going to be moving. We only have, you know, it's, we started, we were like, I can't believe it just got done. You know, we just got done celebrating the holiday, but we only really have like the half year to plan sort of the last bit of details. And then summer, you know, people are going to be on vacation. So we'll have a smaller group of people to work with you guys know. So um, I think it'll start to really pick up some momentum and heat as we get into the fall. So I'll more than likely be back um, and certainly reach out to me and Troy has my contact information, but I think it's going to be a nice community event. And if we, if you have any ideas or suggestions, people to reach out to certainly let me know. And um, we have two face, well, we have the Facebook group, the Litchfield, um, we use the what's up in Litchfield to post when we're having our meetings and things like that. But we have our own, um, Christmas in Litchfield planning, um, site as well, Facebook site that we use. And obviously we have email and we have a distribution list. So, um, our next meeting is July 18th, six to seven at the Dara Pond under the pavilion. That's where we usually are meeting now, just you know, kind of being one <clears throat> with the space that we'll end up using as our spot. So, um, so hopefully it'll 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 be a nice <clears throat> community event. Sounds like fun. Well, I want to thank you for sharing that with us, and thank you for the work that you're doing. And uh, you know, if the board 
can offer you moral support financially. We're a little <laughs> well. We have, our, like I said, a, it's a very good. I mean, it's a small, but you know, it's a really good, consistent, committed group of um, volunteers that are excited. And I, like I said, I think as we get further into the detailed planning, we will be reaching out to the community and asking for very specific things that we need, whether it be, you know, we, we know someone's going to have to be watching the fire that night and we're going to ask for cleanup crews and, you know, things like that. So there'll be specific um, tasks. We'll be reaching out for more help as it gets closer. Any questions or comments from members of the board? Well, you know, only thing I, that I would probably recommend for, from a standpoint being where is the first one, it's probably going to be very, very busy. There are, does have limited parking, so then yes. you have to get out onto Wood Hawkway. One thing you may want to think about is shuttle. From the school, well, from the school. From the school. Yeah, we would have to probably reach out. Yeah, and so just, to do that. just for that reason, because that parking lot's really not big. And then where's right. the first the annual one? Usually that's where people are. So really we were thinking it was actually the opposite. It's the first. It also, so... We start at 6.30. The Manchester Parade ends at 7. And we're thinking, well, people would be at the Manchester Parade and potentially coming back. So it may not be well attended this year or depending on weather. We were thinking, well, the first year we may not get a lot of people. That's what we were thinking. Yeah, I can contest but I hope with, you're right. with Nightman. I hope this. that's our problem. I worked there the first year and it was nuts. But, I mean, that, that's a larger scale. But yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people will personally attend this. You might be surprised. You know, people yeah. probably I, I would like to stay local that. and support the the community, right. Well, community. like I said, we're going to be Especially sending out vendor so letters and hopefully get all of our local businesses there and right. really kind of, and we're offering, it won't be a very expensive fee to have the, you know, like I said, it's our first year and we're hoping that this will be a nice template. So next year will be <coughs> a little bit easier. And so great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew <clears throat> front and center. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, thank you. Matthew has an idea he would like to share with us. Yeah, so uh, last November, the city of Manchester um, revisited its flag, and they wanted to, um, people inputted some other designs, like there were four other designs on top of their already existing flag. Um, the the existing flag, um, I think, had 84% of the vote, so uh, none of the new ones came in, but I thought it was uh, very interesting, and I thought uh, Litchfield should have a flag of its own. So, um, so I put, I had some colors before we get started on the flag design. So I was thinking of ha having it be relatively simple where the focal point will be the town seal. So blue will represent kind of the history, the past of the town. Litchfield is extremely old. According to the New Hampshire Archaeological Society, people have been here for thousands of years, like uh, indigenous tribes. And it can also represent the Merrimack River. White can kind of represent the, um, the transparency in, in the town, the, meet, the town meeting style of government, which is kind of an open forum where everyone can, can discuss and add things, and it's a, a more direct form of democracy. And it represents the future, like a blank slate, like, like a, kind of like the um, uncertainty. Um, greens can represent agriculture, the community, this, um, the sense of everybody being very close and like, like a value of friendship. It also represents the present. Um, so those are going to be the three predominant col colors in the designs I have, but I also added red and yellow. Red is going to represent service, so uh, for veterans and first responders, like our fire department has a lot of uh, volunteers in town. We have some policemen who are from uh, Litchfield, um, and our veterans, we've had, uh, we've sent individuals off to battle since uh, the French and Indian War in 1760, I believe. Um, and it also represents altruism and uh, volunteers in our town because a lot of people in government volunteer their time. And yellow will kind of represent the uh, integrity, honesty, and respect. And I feel like all these values that all these colors represent kind of make the, uh, the building blocks that um, make Litchfield and small towns successful. So now I have some designs to run through. Uh, this is the first one. Second third and these are all I did these on uh, Microsoft paint because you like rough drafts I can make these flags by hand or I can have them done by a, a, a screen printing uh, business okay. yeah like I can actually sew them <clears throat> well, that's your own, huh? <laughs> Oops, I'm probably going through these a little too quickly so Matt only one comment so yep. the seal is black and white only 
Oh no! I was I originally got the the black and white seal, but then I saw that there was the yeah, color that's the version. Line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to put that. I'll put, I can put that on. All right. So I can. And, I if the board's okay with it, I can send you the transparent version of it so you can use it. When, please. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so I could I could hand make these and then um, have a screen printer, a local one in town, kind of print on the seal. I've been talking with uh, Eastwood screen printers who are right over the border in Hudson, and um, I'm going to see if they can do that for me. Um, here's a more uh, unique or uh, kind of eccentric design I did with all the colors and uh, is another one kind of a more unique design. And then I, I spoke with the Historical Society about some of the uh, designs and they were telling me that the town has um, two colors, blue and white. So um, I came up with um, this one where it's a white border and a, a solid blue uh, up upon which the seal will be located. and. Um, so that was kind of what they recommended. I did a variation what was had a green border. And then um, another one was just uh, blue and white. And finally, kind of like how Manchester has just the seal over a white background. And yeah, that's, uh, that's those are my designs right now. I got to narrow it down significantly to, I want to see what the public likes and mm -hmm. get it down to a couple and see where we can go from there. Wow. Gentlemen, your thoughts? I like the blue blue flag, like the fourth one up, without the green border. I don't know, oh, sorry, up. this one right here. <clears throat> yeah, that one. That one, okay. With a colored seal. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I only had the black and white one at the time, so I can I can go back in and put in the color one later on. Um, what do you propose, Matt? Uh, as far as how this is your first meeting mm -hmm. with us and um did you propose to visit other community groups in town or did you uh, what was where are you going from here so i was i was going to the historical society i'd like to speak with um with like uh the planning board and some other um some other groups in town uh if the heritage commission members would like to see it or essentially anybody who's interested in seeing it and like has an interest in history or just in the community in general and they'd like to see them i'd love to share them with them and get some feedback see what they'd like to see on on a town flag if i can make it for them or see if i if they like um, some of the designs i'm proposing um, so what would you like to hear from us tonight so I am looking to um, gain permission to use the town seal to um, just um, so I can start getting public feedback and seeing what they like so I can significantly narrow it down and then get a good <laughs> list of like four or five designs to go to Warren article in March. Gentlemen, your thoughts? I think it's a great idea. Thank you very much. Put a lot of good work into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all what we would need is a motion to authorize <coughs> Matt to utilize the town seal in his quest to design a potential town flag. Um, so I'll entertain that now. So moved. Moved by Mr. Burnell. Second. Second. Multiple seconds. We'll give Mr. Schaefer <coughs> um, credit this time. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries five zero zero. Matthew, thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Nice to see uh, Great work, you um, involved. You know, sharing all of your skills and talents. That it would take us six months to do what you did in six minutes. <laughs> it was um, it was yet, um, a year ago tomorrow that I was I came before the board and uh, was appointed on the conservation commission. So. Yeah, a year down, uh, almost a year later, I'm back. <laughs> right, good for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, Matt, the logo's in your email, in your town email. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Once it gets over there, it's kind of big. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Brennan. Welcome again. Thank you. I'm trying to go simple. Here we go. <clears throat> Uh, Jason Brennan, 23 Aldrich Street. I'm here tonight to give a quick river access update and then to talk about the names. Okay. So 
As far as the river access update, the construction, I'd say we're about 85, 80, 85% there. Uh, what we have remaining to do is, well, firstly, what you can't see way down in the distance, the guardrail's all done. We painstakingly dug 40 something holes and Continental did such a great job that their <laughs> sub base is this deep. So we're down there, <laughs> an arm throwing rocks out. It was it was tough digging. Um, and now we're currently putting in the fencing along both sides for the first 50 feet. And then after that will be rocks going all the way down to the parking area. So we've got the rocks and then we've got the signage. And so that's where I'm here tonight to talk a little bit about the signs. Anything else? Did I miss anything, John? Okay, so naming. What we wanted to talk about tonight was naming of the site. Uh, what we did is we had a virtual meeting with the committee members and people gave a bunch of different ideas and we maybe had about a dozen ideas. Uh, some of them were historical in nature, some of them were related to people in town. And uh, we basically put those all on the list and sent out an internal survey and had everybody rank them. Um, after taking a look at the data and going through it all, it kind of boiled down to these four uh, potential names, Litchfield Landing, Litchfield River Access at Natticook Landing, Litchfield Landing on the river, Litchfield River Access on, on the Merrimack. I think we shied away from, folks were shying away from historical names and personal names for a couple of different reasons. I think John actually said it best is that this kind of point point blanks tells you what it is and that it's well kind of only Litchfield only. You know, so we're not kind of we're not uh, beating around the bush at all. And then secondly, it also gives us time in the future if we want to dedicate this river access facility to somebody in town, we can do that later on down the line. Um, so that's what we've got right there. Those are the top four. What we're looking for tonight is for you to just give us a blessing and then we'll start making the signs. And get so which one we like? Is that what you look for? I, I, I mean, like those are the rankings right there. Yeah. I like number two. I like number one. <clears throat> I so like this, number two. And the reason why I like number two is what is this? It, right. It's a river access, right? So yeah. landing is a little, mm. you know, it, it describes exactly what, what it's made for to access the river. Ditto. <laughs> yeah. Right. Doesn't matter to us. 2013 was obviously 2018. I, 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 I got that. I'm trying to figure out. The, well, I the stole that from Sawmill. Yeah. 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 That's me. I, yeah. Um, is it is, it's, it, is it, it Natacook Landing? Like, is that is that Natacook no, anything having to do with that area? Or? Was that I speak to that point? I'm, there we go. Uh, Natacook was the name of that region. Natacook Brook is actually on the opposite side. It's over in Merrimack, but the region kind of encompassing Merrimack and Litchfield was um, known as Natacook prior to the um, or when the European settlers began arriving. So it's of historical um, significance, and it's historically accurate. Mm -hmm. So the three historical things that came up were Natticook, which Matt just mentioned, Breton Farms, which you can throw a two-second sentence on that one. Go ahead. Yeah, Brent, uh, William Brenton was granted uh, land in what would become Litchfield in 1656 from the uh, colony of Massachusetts um, Bay. And uh, he held that was it held that name approximately until it's um, Litchfield became a municipality in 1734. Can you come every meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get educated. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm and the third uh, historical name was at Ferry Crossing, Litchfield River Access at Ferry Crossing. Now the ferry was actually down probably a half a mile further down the river. So it's right. not. There were two of them, Thornton's yeah. Ferry and Reed's Ferry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Different ends there then. So that's where we're at. And I, at this point in time, whatever is you guys it, want to do is good with us. Is it up to the board to name it or who's who should be naming this? You originally said it would be up to us as a group. 
I, I, I think we keep going round and round. <laughs> we, we don't have a consensus in the group yeah. um, where to go with it. And not that anybody's dug their heels in either and said, I, this is all I want. Mm-hmm. It's just, we, so you're looking for help? Yes. In the naming. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I mean, ultimately, I think you guys should probably decide. You know, but like I said, it's described, it's created for the river, the access to the river. So I just think having that river access in there would be important. Okay. Would, do you, would you gentlemen like to offer them a consensus vote or a or a vote? Yeah. Yeah, what are we? All right, All right Mr. Bork, go ahead and make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll make a motion for number two uh, for the Litchfield River access at the Natticook Landing. River. Motion by Mr. Bork. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion. Yes. So that being said, <laughs> if you guys want to change at Natticook or whatever. Okay. Great. Gotcha. I just think the river access part is important. Yes. Understood. I like that yeah. too. It was mm-hmm. descriptive. And mm-hmm. that's the reason I. It's very much to the point. Yep. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Motion carries 500 for option number two, recommended by the board. Okay. Good. The signage that you would normally have in a variety. Would that be a planning board issue? Oh, oh, oh like I'm that. sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. No, is that a recreation? It's, 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 been, rec- it's been rec for That's rest. a rec- recreation. Usually it's me. I just want to make sure you. Well, no, it's, yeah, it's not you. It's the rec commission. Rec commission is approved. We've had that problem, right? <laughs> That's why I don't go to meetings anymore. I don't have any more to say, you know? It's all you, John. <laughs> yeah, I would think that. Okay. That, unless there's some legal thing we have to put down there, I would say this, right. it's all set. But I mean, you guys check that anyway, right? Before you, you know, all the signage should. Oh yeah, we've gone through right. town after town after town locations for that's the group. Our group, uh, the okay. River Access Group, already did that, mm-hmm. and the okay. Rec Commission has been overseeing that for months anyway. Excellent. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, Wait, what? A, get great there. groups of people Much coming better. together to do some great things for the who, town. Who took down the signs and go down the road when I'm not supposed to, but it does. It looks awesome. You guys are doing awesome. That stuff. was you. That was me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Just getting there. Yes. Hopefully, a few weeks we're get loose ends. It's pretty much what we're tying up right now. Excellent. Thank All you right. so cool. much again. Thank, Thank you very just much. So you know, you said by the end of June. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> Kid. We're down there every weekend. I know you are. Those holes were hard. I'm telling you, you guys should have come down there. Those holes were serious. <laughs> uh, anything else, John? I miss anything? All right. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. Okay. Um, why don't we take it's 20 of seven? Why don't we ask for public input? Is there anyone here that would like to offer public input? Okay. Hearing none, I'll close public input and we'll move on to item six. Uh, grant applications and acceptance. Um, that me, is that, excuse me, I'm sorry, but does public input like to get a complaint and like to bring something to the town's attention? Is that public, public comment? You have the opportunity to comment on okay. something. Well, can I bring some issues that are concerned me on my property at this point? Uh, well, let's let's see what you got. Come on up, sir, and see what uh, see how we can help you. <clears throat> So I live on public cast circle. I've been there for 40 years. Well, and what, can you sit in the mic? Yeah, introduce Frank yourself. Pardon me? Introduce yourself into Frank the Frank. microphone, sir, because we're, mic over to you, we're sir. being televised live. All right. <laughs> Sounds cool. So anyway, uh, things have been pretty cool, except maybe the last four or five years I've had issues with snow plowing. I know it's only June, guys, but anyway. So I've tried to address this problem in a few ways, and so I have some pictures, but in actuality, uh, I'm just here to present the pictures, but the best thing anybody could do is probably take a ride down the street and look at them. So I'll, you can hand them one way or the other. I have some new pictures here. And so Thank you. what happens is, uh, for whatever reason, I don't drive a snowplow, but... Uh, Two out of the last three years have been taking out my sprinkler head on the side of my property. 
So in CocoCast Circle, there's two circles actually. And so you go around one and then you can go around the other one. So if you look at the pictures as they go, uh, the first picture show the properties and you can see that it really is, uh, works pretty cool. One of these guys is rocks very close to the road and none of these people gets any damage or anything like that. Except when you get to my property, when the guy makes the corner and he cuts it. I've got pictures of the damage and so forth. So uh, what I've done in the past, I've taken uh, eight foot sections of rebar, put them in about two feet into the ground and I put reflective tape three or four places on the thing so the snowplow sees where these things are. Um, he just flattens them when he goes around the corner. He just goes right over them. So not this past winter, but the winter before, I brought it to the attention of the road agent. He came out and said, yeah, that's a pretty bad job, and uh, maybe a new driver, on and on and on. So that's cool. But And then this past <clears throat> winter, uh, I take off for the winter for the most part, but I saw the snowplow guy, and I told him, hey, those markers over there, that's where my edge of my property is. This is a Litchfield snowplow driver, not somebody that you uh, outsource. So, so I showed it to him, but when I came back, Things were flattened once again, and uh, they haven't addressed the problem. Um, so <clears throat> I think, uh, I guess it's up to the town to decide what to do. The road agent says, really, he's, I haven't talked to them this year, but my wife did, and he said that he was going to come and repair whatever damage was done on my property, uh, but he hasn't. So um, I want someone to look into what can be uh, change so that this doesn't happen year by year. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you, since I'm such a long resident uh, on the street, that on one of these circles, there's a bunch of smaller pine trees, nine of them approximately. The biggest one is about seven inches in diameter. All the others are four or five. But that's one of the neighbors that uh, picked up these pine trees next to his uh, camp in Maine and just put them in the ground. So they're not, weren't put there by the town. But it appears that those pine trees on this first cul-de-sac circle there are part of the problem because when the plow comes around, he probably doesn't want to hit the trees. And as a result of that, he cuts over my property and uh, takes out my thing. So my, what I'd like the town to do is uh, cut down those small pine trees. Uh, there's no power lines in that close to the vicinity. The parks and rec could probably easily take it. Um, and as you can see from, you will see from the pictures is that when they cut the corner like that, it would be nice. Like I said, I put all this rebar up the whole way and they just did my street. So I can see where there's a name for it, but where they make the X on the side of the road, whatever that's called, you know what that's called guys. How do you mean the X? Well, it's a fluorescent X, you know, they measure oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's something access, something or other. Right. Of right, away. Right, right away. Right. Away. Okay. Right. My sprinklers are, outside of that access area. Okay, everything I have is outside of that access. I mean, is inside that access area. So oh, it isn't good. like- He scared me for a minute. Inside the access area. So uh, the, the railroad agent said he could go as high as my land, my property marker. That's like eight feet up on top of the hill. Yeah. I, I must have misunderstood him. That doesn't seem logical, but I guess he could if he wanted to. So um, what I would like uh, to do, and I would pay for anything is, like I said, I put these rebar things up. But uh, ideally on that, this one corner, once, once again, if somebody had the time to take and drive down there and see what I'm talking about. Uh, I was thinking about uh, four foot, four inch pipe, about three feet long, four of them on that corner where they cut the corner. And in the summertime, I could take and cover them with this, if they were flush. And in the wintertime, I could take a three inch pipe, put it down, and that would act as a, uh, a barrier, so to speak, for these plow guys. Certainly, it doesn't have to come to this. I, I, I kind of think it's kind of crazy for me to go to this extent. All you got to do is, like, talk to people. I mean, what are you doing out here, guys? You know, they used to have whatever. So um, that's what I'm saying. It's just uh, if you see you see the pictures, I don't think they, I don't know if there's any merit in this, but you see all the other properties, people have grass right up to the edge of the blacktop, and nothing gets touched. They go four feet inside my, off the blacktop to get my sprinkler head. It doesn't make any sense. Would, uh, could I offer, uh, 
possibly a suggestion that um, maybe one of us with the town administrator and the road agent, um, could we go up there and meet with you? I've already talked to the road agent two or three years in a row now. He knows what the pro he knows who I am. All right, then how about we do this? Can you give us two weeks mm -hmm. to meet with him, to talk to him about it? And you keep the pictures. I have another set right here. Okay. And if you could make sure that the town administrator has your information. Yeah. Um, address, telephone number, and name. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can we commit to you to, within two weeks to get back to No, I, that's why I'm here. It's June. We have plenty of time. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just saying that I know that, uh, I mean, I would gladly put those four-inch pipes in the ground right on the edge of my grass and just in front of my uh, sprinkler head so nobody hits it. But I kind of think if you hit one of those things, somebody's going to know it. I mean, right. it might get a little bop on the plow's uh, face. So I don't want to do that and get sued. So I, I, Sure. Before we do anything, let's do a little fact-finding on our part, sure, too. Yeah. And I certainly commit to you that within a couple of weeks to uh, probably – find a solution for you yeah, yeah. because okay. I understand certainly, you know, with the pictures and everything, it's, it's evident that, that you are having an issue there. <laughs> yeah. And, I, I, and I certainly kinda, yeah. um, we need to try to address it. And yeah, yeah. And if you give us a couple of weeks, we'll be, yeah, he's, he's, you know, I mean, I, he's talked, the road agent himself has talked about taking a bunch of trees down and that wouldn't bother me at all. I mean, if they cleared yeah. off that original cul-de-sac thing there, they could stack their snow there if they wanted to, but sure. I just wanted to bring it to people's attention. It's not like I haven't tried to deal with the town and all that stuff. And I try no, I understand, to kind of be fair and in actuality, this guy, it's all turf that I put there. He doesn't have to come back and put turf in. I just want this thing addressed. And every time when I come back in the spring, pick up these flattened uh, rebar things and all that stuff, that's kind of senseless for me to do that. I, I understand your frustration and, yeah. and let us do some fact finding and um, try to reach a solution yeah, cool. for you. That'd be good. I'm retired, so. Okay. <laughs> um, Troy, are you all set? Can we do that? Uh, it's yeah. pointers. It was 40 okay. Coco Keys. A uh, 12 Coco Keys circle. Okay. Um, and the paint's there for a while, so you guys have, it'll probably, I'm not going to, my lawnmower's going to take it all off. That orange paint that you sprayed? Yeah. Did you spray that? Fluorescent? Yeah. 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 And that's your, that's where my sprinkler is, right there in the middle of that thing. And it's not even the middle. All right. All right, let's try to see what we could do for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for thank coming you. in. Thank you. You guys can keep those, and you can show the road if you want. I got interest. Got all the information you need? I do, thank okay, you. Okay, thanks for your time, guys. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Okay, uh, we will close public comment, and I will go on to item six, grant applications and acceptance. Um, Mr. Brown, you want to go over the four of those? Sure. <clears throat> okay, so we have, um, since, since we've last met, we've had a couple of grants that have come in and um, some donations and uh, a receipt of a grant. So one, our um, <clears throat> David Mellon, the solid waste director, he's looking for authorization to submit a grant application to purchase an oil filter crusher. And absorbent pads. So what he's looking at doing, he get, actually receives a lot of these oil filters. And we'll, after we drain them, um, this piece of equipment uh, would crush them and then they are able to be recycled. So it's the, the actual cost of this equipment is just over $2,000 and it would be funded 100% by the grant. The other one is emergency operations plan update. Um, Chief Fratzel is um, aware of a grant that would update this plan that it's 50% um, cash and 50% in-kind match from the town. So it actually doesn't cost the town any money except for our, uh, our labor and, you know, services that we provide and trying to assist in updating the plan. The grant would actually fund um, a person that would work with the department and they would they would actually write the uh, the update of the plan, hand it over to the town. That plan is important to have in place. Uh, without it, uh, it it actually prevents the town from seeking other grant opportunities <coughs> that we'd be looking at um, at the new fire station. 
The town office doors, uh, as many of you uh, may be aware, we had a local resident who owns North, North Shore Sign, Richard Curry. He came in, donated his time and material, and re-lettered the entry doors, um, putting on nice. the office hours for both dispatch, yeah, town clerk, and the town office. So it was really nice. He put the town seal on one of the doors. Mm -hmm. And also wanted to make the board aware that New Hampshire, the beautiful uh, grant application was awarded. Again, David Mellon submitted this grant application and that purchased uh, a new sign down at the transfer recycling facility. And that looks very nice. Yeah, it does. Yep. Very, very nice. Uh, and you want from us? I'd, I'd like to have on, uh, I've prepared a motion for the board um, to, to make and vote on. Um, it's important that we have some of these as their own motion so so i'll do uh i'll move to authorize dave mellon Sol solid waste and recycling manager to submit a grant application to purchase an oil filter crusher and absorbent pads moved by mr burnell Second. seconded by mr bork discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed abstain motion carries five zero zero i move I move to authorize Frank Freitzel, Fire Chief, to submit a grant application to update the town's emergency operations plan. Moved Second. by Mr. Schaefer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunel. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Town office doors. I move to accept donated labor and materials from Richard Curry North Shore Signs for lettering the office <clears throat> I was on the town office entry door and asked the town administrator to send a thank you letter. Moved by Mr. Weber. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunel. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. And the last one? I guess that must be me. <laughs> <laughs> I move to accept the grant from New Hampshire, the beautiful, for the replacement of the town transfer facility signs. Moved by Mr. Bork. Second. Seconded by Mr. Weber. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 0 0. See? We just want to be fair. It's equal. Fair and equal. Okay, uh, item seven, Ekman, Mr. Brown. Okay, you you have in your packet, and I forwarded it to you early last week, <clears throat> a contract that Ekman uh, Construction has asked the town to sign. Uh, it's in the amount of $3,211,711. That's uh, to do just with the construction costs for the fire station. And that's the contract that we're, we'll be signing this evening. That... Um, just want to make sure the public and everyone's aware that there's an additional estimated cost of $517,689, which would be a soft cost that the owner uh, absorbs those costs and um, contingencies as well. So I think the bottom line right now, again, these are um, uh, the Ekman construction contract. That's a guaranteed maximum price. The five hundred thousand dollars soft cost is, you know, there's some moving parts there. So, but uh, if everything goes as planned, uh, we're definitely uh, looks like projecting to come in under that uh, the amount that was authorized that by town vote. So we're still under. Right? Yeah, perfect. Gentlemen, do I have a motion? I move to authorize town administrator to sign the Litchfield Fire Station contract in the amount of three million two hundred eleven thousand seven hundred eleven dollars. This amount does not include the estimate owner, owner, the estimated owner and soft costs in the amount of five hundred seventeen thousand six hundred eighty-nine dollars. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion. Get it done. Get it done. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Abstain. Motion carries five zero zero. You know, the bad part was it was an electronic transfer from the bond agency. I never saw the check. <laughs> <laughs> there was no check. I wanted to see it. You didn't get the hold of it. Yeah, yeah, the big you know, multi million dollar like check. The Ed McMahon thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, San Susi, uh, Mr. Brown. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, PSNH, Eversource, they filed an appeal, as I understand, with every single town. Um, back in 2015, 
Um, <clears throat> as far as I understand their appeal, they believe that they should not be taxed for their utility poles, conduits that are in the town's right of way. So they filed this appeal uh, statewide as our state legislature, you know, they've been trying to deal with this. The Board of Land and Tax Appeals has been trying to deal with it. And so things have been on hold, but it looks like everything's moving forward. Um, our legal firm, Mitchell and Bates, <clears throat> is consolidated all the towns they represent. So our legal fees are being shared with approximately about 20 other communities uh, that Mitchell and Bates represents. George Sansusi, which is a, um, a very well-known um, engineer um, that that specializes in utility assessments, commercial utility assessments, recently settled the case between uh, the town of Litchfield and Penichuk Waterworks. He has reached out to all the New Hampshire communities, and currently right now he has 70 communities that have signed on um, to have him represent their towns. He's reached out to us. <clears throat> we would be the 71st town, I believe, if we join. Um, and what this does, it, it allows us to really reduce our costs in trying to provide the expert you know, um, analysis that's required to take on this type of an appeal. His estimate uh, is that it'd probably be around $5,000 per year. That would be the town of Litchfield's cost. And this matter could go on for one and a half, two years. So worst case, we'd be looking at about $10,000. $10, oh. $10,000. <laughs> uh, <I, laughs> $10, <laughs> so it, it really makes sense that we, that we join this. We're effort. not alone in this. We're not. Gentlemen, questions, comments? Uh, you need a motion or we all? A motion to authorize me to proceed forward with a contract with Mr. Sansu. So moved. Moved by Mr. Bork. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunel. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 <coughs> zero, zero. All this legal stuff is driving me. I know. Well, good thing we have legal minds it protecting us. We just thought we got the Pinachuk resolve. And then, yeah, yeah, I know. It did, it's never ending. The elderly exemption limits. Troy? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hold on. I think that's why, yeah. <laughs> 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 Locked it up. Gate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did Roy Memorial Park access gate. Skipped right over that. My humble apologies. Well, this is an interest one, interesting um, issue. I uh, never really paid much attention to it. I've been down to Roy Memorial Park and driven all the way down to Dara Pond many times. <laughs> I've driven to the basketball court to watch the construction going on and the new uh, line striping. And I've uh, been down there recently looking at the water meter work that we're doing. So uh, never even occurred to me that, uh, that there's an actual access gate that uh, remains open. So um, when this was brought to my attention, uh, really looking for just speed control uh, down at the park. When I talked to the highway agent and I talked to the police chief about, you know, what could we do to start to control the speed? And both of them just shook their head and said, well, we don't understand why the gate's not locked. You know, you know many years ago, it used to be locked and there was no problem. Um, and then for whatever reason, the gate was unlocked. So I spoke with the chairman of the rec commission and asked him what he knew. And he told me that at some point in time, uh, it was kind of an indirect thing. We're not, you know, I don't think it was a vote of this board, but somehow word got to the rec commission asking them to unlock the gate because residents were not able to get down to Dara Pond to carry their kayaks and, and canoes. And probably my guess, I'm just making this up, that maybe there had been some events going on for different athletic groups or something that sometimes someone couldn't find a key. Usually that happens at these parks, but it was, okay. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm here. I'm glad John came this evening that I have to really support the, uh, 
the road agents and the police chief concerned and the fire chief had a conversation with me and shared his same concern about the fact that we have, and I believe this might be the only rec facility that we have right now um, that doesn't restrict vehicle access. Sawmill, park, there isn't real a real way to get your car unless you break through the wooden you know, guardrails um, to just drive your vehicle onto you know, the basketball courts, the I, baseball fields. I was under the impression that gate was locked. Now you're talking about the gate that's right in front of Darapon, right? Not not actually going into the parking lot. Gate you're talking to where the right pavement the, is? Right at the edge of the softball field. Right okay. the, where the, the pavement area. starts. Yeah, where the Park pavement starts. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Emergency yeah. services would have access if it's locked, correct? There was a chain that we had on that gate years ago and it had three locks on it. It was one from the police department, one from the fire department, one from the rec. And basically, it was any one of us could disconnect that chain. Uh, it was a chain of locks, effectively. Are, are you, do you have an issue locking that? Or would you oh, prefer? I'm fine with that. No issue at all. I don't, I, don't want to Troy, I don't think there's anyone in this room that, that, that does not want to see that gate locked. I think the, the one thing that, you know, you, there are people who do use thereupon, <clears throat> and they will, you know, now have to carry their, uh, their, um, their kayak or canoe, you know down to the pond but the but distance really isn't any further than the river too. access facility so same it's thing. the same thing so actually yeah well, the river access is probably they're going to have to carry it down there too so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm it's afraid of the liability if we don't lock that gate you know if someone gets in there with a car and we, we destroys that the softball fields and everything holy moly we thought we'd have an issue with handicap parking for the pickleball access We've opened up an area of parking for them, but nobody's using it. Nobody's requested it. And if someone came to the rec commission and said, I need access for this, we would just end up giving them a walk call like we do with the leagues. Well, that's, what, that's what we did in the past. If, if, if you guys don't have a problem locking it, does anyone here have a problem locking it? No. Go for it. <clears throat> Well, you, you yeah, well, so it, it takes a little coordination with fire and, and the Yeah, make sure emergency services have access. So John had an idea where um, so that we have um, handicap um, access to the park, that that gate, because it, it rolls out, there's a way that we can roll it out and you can literally stop it probably four feet from the uh, fence post. We can lock it in place, and so people can still bypass right through the gate. Oh, there's no passive. What's that? There's no passive. There was. I thought there's a passive. Right? There's a there's a, a, pa by there's the a but it's a little one, and as uh, a utility, you would never get a wheelchair through there, okay. and you wouldn't be able to get your kayak and canoes through. Well, well I I think that whatever they <clears throat> feel as a recreation, you know, they're the custodians of that place. So we'd always let access in there. I think you know you have our support, so. Okay. Okay. All set. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, delay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now on to elderly exemption limits. Thank you, Jay. Troy. Okay, I had a resident come in um, asking, uh, he, his purpose of visiting was basically, look, I'm going to um, maybe work with a group of folks and consider putting together a petition or an article to, to amend the elderly exemption limits. However, in the past, um, you know, I've worked with the Board of Selectmen and, you know, and ask them to kind of look at your, your limits. And if you feel that um, there needs to be an adjustment made, then the selectmen endorse it and sponsor the article. And he kind of left the ball in my park. And he, I know you folks have, um, I believe you've seen the email that may have been forwarded to you about this. So my, I just wanted to point out to you the way the elderly exemptions work. Um, currently, right now, these limits are set by town vote. So we have, if you're a single um, individual owning property in this town, your house uh, and one acre of land, I believe it is, is exempt um, from the asset calculation. So your, um, your home and your, your property is exempt. 
You cannot have an income if you're a single person that exceeds $30,000 a year. Your assets cannot exceed $300,000. And so if you, you meet those criteria then and you're in the age bracket, you can see there's different age brackets. So for example, if you're 65 to 74 years of age, you would get uh, an exemption or a reduction of $50,000 off your assessed value. And as you get older, you can see the um, reduction, uh, assessed value reduction gets greater. I guess the board is in a position where you can choose not to do anything, allow this these residents to go forward and let them do their homework and present a petition warrant article. Or we could do a quick survey of um, Southern New Hampshire comparable towns and see what's going on around us. I honestly do not know um, what what the limits are. If these look to be, you know, kind of consistent with what's going on around us or not. Wouldn't we be in better shape Come town meeting if we did know what the other towns I would do. I've I've been through this before, and I would prefer that the board um, pursue. Let's let's gather our facts and information. Right. So if we're <clears throat> faced with a petition, we already know if we can support that petition right. article or not. Or you may find that um, that we um, that these numbers do need to be adjusted a bit, and we sponsor that. We we do the warrant. Not, we would do it. Right. right. It makes more sense. Yeah. Everyone okay with it? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. We don't need to vote on that choice. Gather info. I think it did. Towns we don't need to vote. Just, no, if you're fine, then I'll, I will um, right. I'll reach out to the, the citizen, make him know that we're going to we're going to go out and collect some information and we'll get back. Okay. I think he just wants to know that we're kind of, you know, he was looking for direction if, if he just needed to move forward with a petition or if we would do some work on this with him. We would, yeah. Okay, snowplow contract. All right, so. so what's the context? How does it start? Yeah. <laughs> I know, listen. This? Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of back when we were doing the, um, we were updating our purchasing policy. Okay. And then I brought, it was in the same meeting, and what really was, we, we were down probably, at this time, we believe we're down two um, contracted uh, plow drivers. And I came to the board to say, how do you want to um, recruit these two plow routes that we have that are vacant? In the past, the practice had been, uh, you know, the road agent would go out, find someone, um, work you know, his um, network of folks and and get these contracts in place so that we have the drivers, um, everything ready to go in the fall. The board uh, then decided that they wanted me to reach back to, to our legal counsel because they, there was a discussion about, well, you know, do we put all of the, uh, the contract to work out to competitive bid or a fair and open process. It wouldn't really be a competitive bid process because we have a set amount that we pay drivers. So we, we it would be more of um, a notice that we give, a public notice, encouraging people that are interested to submit their um, their their letter of interest, and we would probably make a selection based on their equipment, their um, you know experience, staff that they have, and all this. Um, I was a little taken back by that and telling the board, well, really, you know, in my opinion, the contractors that we've had, uh, it's been past practice that, you know, if they plow snow for us and we have no reason not to want their services again next year, those contracts are just renewed. And I'm just looking for a direction on how you want to handle these two empty slots. And the board asked me to go, at least get an opinion from our attorney whether or not um, we had a right to to go forward and bid it all. Um, as you can see, uh, at this point in time, I've asked the road agent for um, contracts. 
I still have not been provided with those contracts. So I, I don't know if we had contracts this year or not. That w that played a big role in Laura's opinion saying that, well, you don't have contracts. So there's no ownership in those contracts. She's, you know, her recommendation is that really at the will of the, of the board, if you want us to open this up and request proposals from a public process and that we go through an, a selection, um, and she doesn't have a problem with that. That's her recommendation. Yeah. yeah. But point of clarification. So <clears throat> what about the drivers that provide the truck and get our equipment? Well, that's because that's a cost. If that's we, where this gets a little complicated because, because right now we have drivers that have indicated that they'd be willing to come back next year and our plow equipment is on their truck. Is on their trucks. So we um if you know if they get upset. That um, one that we're we're not just automatically renewing the contract. They could say we're done. Now we incur the cost of removing that equipment, and we have to mount it on uh, new trucks, a new vendor. And then if that vendor doesn't work out, and we're not going to renew the, then you're in that con you're in this constant cycle of changing out of you know power equipment, which is very expensive. I, so my my thought is is that the people that already have gear and are equipment on our site with our stuff on it and they're still willing to do they would continue just from a grandfather thing for the two folks that we now have to get new operators and new trucks <coughs> we should go through the process because i think to, well, to, we can't we can't unless there's a i think so if you read the, the wording it come out because there's a belief there is no kind of there had to be some agreement whether it's a whether it's an agreement from jack on they've been doing these plows for plow jobs for quite a while that's why the trucks are here my concern is, is, to your point, we said we're going to go to contract. They, well, we're out. We're done, right? We're not going to fight this battle. You know, we've so long entire truck. We've been taking care of it. We can incur costs, blah, blah, blah. We lose them. Now, we got, now we're going to incur X amount of dollars to keep on, rip the, rip the gear off and put the gear back on. I agree we should start a process that we can repeat going forward and protect, correct any behavior problems we've had going forward, meaning we haven't done things in the right way. Because a lot of these drivers have been around this town for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, is this an all, this is all an hourly rate, right? Until they meet, they meet that. It's an, yeah, it's an hourly rate. So if they provide their own vehicle with plow equipment and everything, <clears throat> well, they, they have our plows on it. They get seventy five dollars an hour. Right. If they provide a driver who operates our equipment, they're paid forty five dollars an hour. Yeah, that's how it used to work. I used to plow for national. It was the same way. I had to provide the, the truck and the plow and depending on the size of the truck was the value of the money right. you got, but there was no guarantee of $12,000 a year. If it's so our, con money. our contract does have a minimum guarantee. Yeah. So I think it's somewhere around $8,000 um, is the minimum. Uh, I just wouldn't think. I'm reading her and it says if there is no contract on file, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't believe we can do what <clears throat> I mean, if you she's going on, it's, it, this is not an easy situation because you know you can see where she even talks about, you know, then going forward as the board does its annual review, and they're part of, they're added to the exempt list, then you know you could renew those contracts on an annual basis. Well, we do do an annual review of our purchasing policy, and these these contractors have been on that list for many years. Um, it's just. As of right now, I've not been provided with the signed contracts that were supposed to All be. All I know, I'm reading recommendations from our attorney. Yeah. And question two is pretty clear. Yeah. Question three is pretty clear. I, I, I know what I'd love to be able to grandfather. But I, I'd like to think that we have contracts somewhere. If there's contract somewhere, then all this is moot. So, so, so where's that guaranteed eight thousand dollars? That would uh, you would think that would have to be in writing somewhere. It's in the contracts. The, the contracts they signed. Okay, but you're saying right. you yeah. can't okay. find the contract. Where, where are the contracts? <laughs> if the contracts have not been provided, a signed contract. Have, have we ever? Have we ever fallen short of the eight thousand dollar guarantee and had no. to do a payout? We have. Well, how, we well have. I think my first year we may have um, paid out some money. So we had a very let's light say, summer. And, I mean, a light winter. So, so, so let's say that you, you know, I drive for the town, which I, I'll never do, but, um, and I meet $7,000. You're going to give me a $1,000 check. 
because you guaranteed that I'd get eight grand. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I was saying, when I plowed for Nashua, it wasn't like that. Well, it's, well, you, you know, know, I don't know what the wrong I know what it's but, for. I mean, it's, it's to try to, try to attract. Commercially it's, 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 it's a, it, it serves two purposes. One, it's a, it's a financial incentive to make sure you're going to show up. And two, it prevents the – it really creates an, a, a, um, a commitment 100% truck to the is town. Tough. The truck is because here. they're not yeah. going to go out there and try to pick up a little shopping mall, too, and all this. They're going to – Well, they can't anyway. This town equipment on the truck. Yeah, that's well, true. Still their truck. <laughs> These guys are landscapers. They have multiple contracts and stuff. Okay. So. I, I mean, the language is just clear. I can't see um, going against our legal advice that we asked for. Can you please solicit – the contracts from the road agent so that it will be easy to mm -hmm. move forward the way she suggests. I, I guess this would be my question. Why wouldn't the contracts be here in the town office? Right. That's a good question too. Mm -hmm. that, that would be my they question. Should be they here. should be here. With, with the liability insurance, Absolutely. the contract. Right. We, right. Have, we have the uh, liability insurance, but the contracts were not, um, were not provided to us. Um, yeah. And Can in you, fact, the finance department said that they, don't recall ever seeing the contracts. I think they've always been at the road agent's office. So. All right, can you? Yeah, we need we need to get those we in. need yeah. to get that in. Oh well, yeah, who signed those contracts? I know. That's exactly. Exactly. Well, wait a minute. Agent. When the road agent, road agent he has, he's under authority for the he has the right to do that for his because right. of the RSAs. Well, well, you're looking he used at to now. He still has the right. he, No, he still has those rights. You're looking at a practice where it was a road agent. I know things change and stuff, but I mean, I think this practice just stayed in place. We just changed how we got appointed. We got the appointed versus elected, but the, I thought the RSAs that applied to his responsibilities were still the same. Even with that, well, we, even, it, oh, they should still be here. I'm right. Here. I don't yeah. so, that, but. so let's see what we can do, Troy, and then let's see if we can come, come back and try with more information. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see yeah, but before happening. you know it. Well, that's, be, it'll be we winter going down. in July. Yeah, but no, we need to do this like next meeting. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I, I guess is not to belabor it, but is one offer is I, we need contracts, right? Period ended. If there's no contracts, the existing drivers are still willing to drive for us. Do we get their contract established so it's year to year versus bidding out the whole shift again? I mean, again, it's something to the board. I just, it feels like if we got to replace, if all of a sudden we got to replace all of our drivers and all this equipment, we're going to incur a significant amount of cash to get trucks off and reload I again. just want to do it legally and I want to do but, it where there's no specter that we acted in a manner that's not consistent with our purchasing policy well unfortunately our, par our past practices would come into play also so if these drivers are tested I've been driving for the town for 20 years or 10 years and this is how it's been working it's a it's just like paying somebody you know I yeah, I like understand. Because we're doing that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right yeah. way to do it. No, I don't. I'm saying is we should get the contract squared away. But I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting if you bid out the whole package, well, we let, could let's be see. short drivers. Let, you know, let's that's, see. All, that's all I'm saying. And, and if we are, we are. I mean, um, are you going to go out there and shovel? I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, but I mean, I want to do it right, and and I want to do it where, um, you know, there's opportunity afforded correctly you know it, 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 you know, to everyone mm -hmm. and um she did give us a blueprint as to how to get this done so yeah, yeah absolutely. let's follow it like you okay um yeah. item 12 the union police union negotiation uh the uh, police union has asked that we um commence negotiations and um what I'd like to do next meeting is have a non-public with all of you to discuss negotiations as we move forward. And hence, uh, I've asked Troy to send the contract out. Um, I don't want to enter into negotiations not knowing what we have and not getting input from you as to where we should, how we should move forward. Mm -hmm. I believe that we should have assistance in negotiating um, a contract. We, I believe we hired someone to do the last. Um, what did we hire someone to do? For the contract? I mean, I don't particularly, again, I was at a disadvantage. Um, I felt as, at a disadvantage negotiating for the board. I, I'm not a professional negotiator. Um, you know, I, I don't know that we shouldn't have professional help in negotiating. We've never had contracts. professional help in the past. 
I understand, John. Um, I just think as things get more complicated, that it's something we need to consider. Well, we, we don't know what they are asking as far as what's going to vary. I mean, I'm sure I can probably guess what some of the things, but why don't I mean why don't we do as we always do? Let's let's declare who our negotiation team is. Let's have that first meeting and figure it out. And then if it require, if we think we need some expert advice on how to well, change their mind on something or how do we address something they want, we could. Well, before we even move forward, I, I would like input from the board on the contract. And then, because at that, uh, until we have that, we're not ready what, to move forward. What contract? Right. There's no contract yet. The police contract. The, the, the current the, one. The current, we, but we've already, we've already approved that one. John. I want input from the members of the board sure. as to as we move forward. If there's anything in that contract they want to address moving forward, okay, okay. If this, you know, negotiations are give and take, not give give one side, take take others. No, you first off, you're getting you could go into it. I agree with you. I'm just saying, why are we going to change? You, you're talking about getting professional help at a fee to go negotiate a police contract with with a small union that we've been negotiating with years. I, I'm saying a point as the board. As this chair, as this chair position has done in the past, appoint a negotiation team to go talk to the union and figure out what they want. Bring those, bring, for lack of a better word, those demands or changes back, and we can decide how we want to position ourselves. And, and I, I think that's a very rational way to do it. And I wasn't asking to do that tonight. I want just a discussion about it. Yeah, well, when we, yeah, I would like the first part of next meeting to discuss negotiations. Uh, in non-public session as we move forward, okay? After the um, groundbreaking. Okay. Is okay. It, oh, the groundbreaking is going to be in the next meeting? Yeah. The 9th? 5.30 the 9th. 9th, okay. Okay. Um, just to have a discussion, a round-robin discussion, and as and when we're ready, then we could um, notify the union that, that certainly we're ready to meet. And we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, administrator report. All right, just to let you know the MRI study of the DVW uh, feasibility study is underway. There's uh, MRI has been here on site two times now. They have conducted some um, conference. Um, calls with with uh, I think with the fire chief and another department um, I know they still need to connect with the Recreation Commission so their goal is to get that um, the contacts you know done and hopefully um, sometime the end of August September we should have something in writing they may be meeting with you uh, prior to actually you know, finalizing the report um, but I just want to make sure everyone's aware that that is still moving forward. Riverside Cottage, if you recall, um, I sent an email out about just trying to collect some information. The um, Litchfield Community Church, they own the Riverside Cottage across the street from the church and the fire station. And they had reached out to me, Pastor Wiley had reached out to me and just asked if there was any um, interest in the town acquiring the property, looking at um, the town taking ownership and leasing it back to the church for a dollar per year or something like that. Um, so that, and I talked to Pastor Wiley to find out more about what was going on. And basically they, you know, they've not made a decision that they're going to be selling this, this building, um, but they are looking at ways of trying to reduce operating costs of the church. And before they decided to do anything with the building, I think they just wanted to reach out to the town because it was their understanding that the town had at one point in time uh, expressed interest in the property because we own land on both sides. And at the time, probably it was discussed, um, it provided rivers, river access. That would be what I know. And so there was some discussion with conservation folks and just people in general. Um, I think the town informally, never is a vote of the town or anything, but certain people had expressed interest in that property because it, we had property that butted on both sides. 
As of right now, um, I'm not sure really what we do with that request. There's obviously the building itself is very old. It requires a lot of update. We have uh, a, um, a new access facility today that's you know providing the residents with really safe access to the river. Um, I don't know if we just, if there's any interest in this board at least formally writing back to the church saying that um, at this point in time, we don't have any interest in the property. Have they approached conservation? They have not, no. I think by reaching how, out to the board of selectmen. How about if we suggest that they reach out to the Conservation Commission to see if they have an interest in that we are, at this point, I don't know that we're in a position to even consider. Well, if my question to you is if, if conservation does get it, would conservation solely be responsible for the upkeep or would it all of a sudden fall into our building and facilities fund for upkeep? And then in which case we might as well buy it ourselves instead of conservation, if you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I agree and I don't have that answer. Yeah. I, it's supposed to be that conservation would, I believe once they buy it, it's theirs and they, okay. mm -hmm. they under state law under the RSA 600 something, I believe they have total, um, um, control over their assets, and that is their asset. Okay, yeah. that's why I'm sure that we're not we're not falling but into. I, but um, I'm just saying I believe that I'm yeah, not. Yeah. Don't take I'll, that to I'll, the bank. I'll do that. We'll formally reach out to conservation, and I mean, you know, I'll suggest to the church they contact conservation, sure, copy the conservation. Yeah, start getting a paper trail. My only thought on this, I, I think really is no reason to jump at making any decisions other than if for any reason the conservation or the town just wanted to have a message to the church that if you do get to the point that you're thinking about selling the property we'd like to have an opportunity to yeah. first opportunity to gentlemen meet. i don't know gentlemen. if there's any value in this property at this point in time yeah. anymore for the town um any alternate view yeah. Okay. Yeah, when do we do that, Troy? All right. And the town hall doors, the ADA paddles have been installed. It's it's wow. operational. So yeah, now that I can walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tested them. Works pretty pretty good. Is that why you put them in? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I looked up one night I did say, Hey, wait a minute. How come there's no way for me to get in with my crutches? <laughs> And um, it's not on my list here, but tomorrow I will be down at Exeter High School. Um, there's the EPA is uh, holding a public informational meeting this evening, and we've asked our attorney to attend that meeting um, to provide, um, to be there for eyes and ears and to provide a statement um, it's regarded on a fact finding kind of a community outreach about communities throughout New England, it sounds like, that have been impacted by PFOA. So tomorrow is more of a, um, it's not not a public meeting for for the, you know, anyone um, to just come in. It's more of a, a working session. So I'll be there all day to just really listen and hear what, what they have to say. Um, and then next week I will be on vacation uh, the week of the fourth. So it'll be a little tricky. I will have um, internet access where I'm at. So I'll be checking a little that. bit. But yeah, it'll stop. be a little tricky with the agenda there. We'll, but we'll get through it. All right. Anything else, Trent? That's it. All right. Selectman reports. Mr. Weber? Nothing from planning board at this time. Okay. Mr. Brunel? It's been so long. Uh, nothing from budget committee. Things are scheduled and moving along. So. Okay. Mr. Thank Schaefer? You. Nothing from REC. Mr. Bork, conservation? Nothing from conservation. Okay. Um, I just have one thing. Um, for any of you that followed, it was in the paper and the legislation on town meeting, postponement of town meeting. Mm -hmm. for, and we had specifically asked our senator, Senate Bill 437, I believe, was the Senate bill that um, would allow the Secretary of State to be the sole uh, arbiter of that instead of like we still believe now that town moderator has that 
uh, responsibility. And do, as do all of the town attorneys. Um, I, we specifically asked our senator to vote against the bill. And I regret to say that um, she did not vote with us. She did not vote for the town. Um, she voted for the bill, which was since uh, on a conference committee, was killed in the House, luckily. Um, so now there, we're back to square one on the, on the bill, but I believe you'll see next session identical bills being introduced in both the Senate and the House to clarify and to maintain the fact that the moderators um, should have, with certain stipulations, the Municipal Association worked pretty hard in putting together a bill that would satisfy all of the questions, all of the problems. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I was a tad disappointed, to say the least. In that. And that's all I have. Uh, there were no items removed from consent. There's no other business. Fire station groundbreaking <clears throat> ceremony is Monday, July 9th. I believe at 5.30? 5.30, yes. Uh, next meeting is Monday, July 9th at 6. And um, any other business to come before this body before we adjourn into non-public session again? Uh, we'll be going into two different um, non-public sessions uh, under RSA 91A32D, buying and leasing of real property. And the second one, RSA 91A32A, compensation. So um, when I, we. I just had something for Kurt. I will email it to you on the assistance. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, so I will, we will only come out to adjourn the meeting. And I will ask for a motion to go into non public. So moved. Again, so moved by Mr. Brunel. So second. Second by Mr. Bork. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Brunel? Yes. I vote yes. 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 <clears throat> 500 zero, zero, roll call to go into non public session under RSA 91A colon 32D buying and leasing of real property. We are now in non public session. Deb, thank you. Thank you.